A deadly shooting inside an apartment tonight. No arrests have been made as the triple homicide investigation is underway in Lexington County. Federal warnings about possible protests at state capitals everywhere. The FBI reports it received information in recent days on a group calling for storming state, local and federal government courthouses. And today marks 100 days since the attack on the U.S. Capitol. Tonight we're learning about another South Carolina man now charged in that insurrection. The rifle Colosso had was not loaded. According to Fort Jackson, trainees are issued rifles in preparation for marksmanship training, but he did not yet have access to ammunition, though the school bus driver and the kids for that matter didn't know that. We have breaking news out of Philadelphia tonight. We wanted to update you on a situation happening there now. We have a live look where police have swarmed an area. The FBI says two agents were killed and three others were injured after a shooting in Florida on Tuesday. It happened while they were serving a federal arrest warrant associated with violent crimes against children. But in the face of all of that, and the sheriff made sure to point this out, the bus driver stayed calm, and that's why the sheriff tonight is calling this bus driver a hero. Uh, this was really the epicenter of a lot of the activity that we saw earlier today. I know a lot of the images have been shared uh, on social media. You've seen the, the police cars on fire uh, around this area. Uh, it's nothing like that anymore. There is still a heavy law enforcement presence uh, almost at nearly every intersection around this area. And this is breaking news this afternoon that the remains of five-year-old Nevaeh Adams have have been found. They found them last Friday in a landfill where they had been searching for a month to find that little girl's remains. Now we know the fans are ready, but it appears they can get too rowdy as well. More fans are getting ejected from williams Bryce Stadium than in any other football venue in the country. South Carolina is changing how it calculates the positivity rate of coronavirus testing. It's one good indication of community spread. The floodwaters have receded significantly tonight. I was told earlier today it was so high that people could kayak down the city streets here in downtown Charleston. Former solicitor Dan Johnson has been sentenced to federal prison for using government money for personal expenses. A Midlands restaurant is serving up a tasty new addition that's gone from the table to the Guinness Book of World Records thanks to a platinum dish. Uh, we're, we're in front of the Lee Central High School where they have set up a shelter for people in this area. They tell me that they have seen some people from the coastal communities coming in here, but most of the people that are here right now are locals. Good morning, Columbia. Thank you so much for waking up with us today. I'm Josh Berry. That's Tyler. That's Claire. The time now is 636. <laughs> And I, I felt it and I've seen it outside. There's some folks outside exercising in front of the state house. You have to commend them because it's chilly. Oh, I yeah. have to ask Tyler, though, I checked my weather app yeah. on my watch this morning. Mm -hmm. There was a snowflake okay. in the 5 o'clock hour. Mm -hmm. well, I, I need some answers here. Yeah. There, Tyler, was that a bit more toned down? I didn't yell at people this morning. Why are you yelling? I mean, I think All people right. need to get I'm up. I'm going to leave the yelling to you. SpaceX says the full crew will be announced in the weeks ahead. Unfortunately, I don't have any announcements to make about joining that crew, but I think they need a journalist. I think so too. Right? I do. And maybe a weatherman? Either way. A stark difference in messages from Biden to Trump after what many say was one of the darkest days in U.S. history since 9 11. We continue to monitor the latest out of the United States Capitol after Trump supporters stormed Congress. A woman shot and killed during a standoff with law enforcement. ABC's Andrew Dimbert kicks off our team coverage tonight with the latest out of Washington. And according to the U.S. Attorney for South Carolina, anyone from the state who took part in the riots at the U.S. Capitol will be prosecuted. Newly elected state representative Nancy Mace also tweeted her experience as the violence erupted in the Capitol. She tweeted, just evacuated my office in Cannon due to a nearby threat. Now we're seeing protesters assaulting Capitol Police. This is wrong. This is not who we are. I'm heartbroken for our nation today. Shortly after that, she tweeted this is insane. Mace spoke with ABC News this afternoon during the protest, calling on the Republican Party and the president to put an end to the violence. Now, the lockdown for some members of Congress lasted six hours with various groups barricaded in offices across the entire Capitol complex after the main building had been cleared. Representative William Timmons talked to me on the phone tonight while he was in lockdown about what he saw. I saw Capitol Police in, in the tunnels of the Capitol. 
Here in Columbia, dozens of Trump supporters gathered in front of the state house today. Yeah, and all of this happened before the riots at the U.S. Capitol. It was before the Electoral College vote was set to be certified, confirming Joe Biden as the next president of the United States. ABC Columbia's Lindsey Goodwin was there. And I'm Josh Berry. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Casey, where the Department of Public Safety there tells us a child has been abducted during a car theft. Here's what we know right now. It happened around 850 tonight at the Quality Inn. That's at 3020 Charleston Highway. Again, this is all in Casey. According to DPS, the unnamed two year old white female was in the car when an African American male jumped in the vehicle and drove away with both the child and a dog in the car. You're seeing pictures of the child, the dog, and the car in question on your screen. The car is a 2003 Lexus sedan, tan in color with no license tag. We've been told that the vehicle also has a tail light out and a white sticker with three small bears on the back window. That car was last seen in the Pine Ridge area of Lexington County. Of course, we're following this story very closely. We'll continue to keep you updated here on the air and online. You can follow us on social media. We have been told that a Amber Alert potentially will be issued at some point this evening once they get more information. Uh, that would include things like her, her name um, and more specifics on the child and potential location and the suspect involved, Rochelle. Make sure that you continue to follow us on air and online as we bring you updates to that developing story. That resolution would put educators and daycare staff in phase 1A of the state's vaccine plan, along with seniors and health care workers. Minority leader Shane Massey tells ABC Columbia it would require all schools to offer in-person classes five days a week after spring break. The governor has said he would oppose plans to delay vaccination appointments for seniors because they're more likely to die from the virus. There is a new shortage of vaccines in hospitals across the state. Prisma Health once again is not accepting walk-in vaccinations this week. The hospital system says it only received a partial supply of COVID-19 doses. Prisma says people who need their second dose but did not have an appointment can make one on Prisma Health's website. They say they're working as quickly as possible to get more doses of the vaccine. And we're doing our best. We do appreciate your patience. And as soon as we have vaccine supply, you will have vaccines in the arms of those who live in the upstate and the Midlands. For more information about vaccine schedules, you can go to our website, abccolumbia.com. Nephron Pharmaceuticals and Dominion Energy are partnering up for a drive through vaccine site. That's located on the Dominion Energy property. That's off of I-77 at exit 2 in West Columbia. The vaccinations are available by appointment only. You can find more info on our website at abccolumbia.com. Richland County deputies say they have arrested two men accused of targeting the Hispanic community in a series of armed robberies. Charles Clippard and Michael Knox are in custody, accused of 17 robberies ranging from January 19th to February 6th, according to the sheriff. Sheriff Leon Lott says these men are a danger to the community. These two individuals here should not see daylight for a long time. If you know of any other crimes these suspects may have committed, please call the Richland County Sheriff's Department. And with that, the heat is behind us. A major cool down this evening after strong storms blew through the Midlands earlier today. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Josh Berry. And I'm Rochelle Dean. We're going to go straight to the Weather Center where Chief Meteorologist John Farley is The families of inmates killed in a prison riot last year say corrections officials could have done more to prevent it. Wrongful death federal lawsuits filed by families of two of the seven inmates killed claim South Carolina corrections officials violated the constitutional rights of the inmates. The lawsuits say Lee Correctional employees knew of broken door locks, overcrowding and contraband use, but made no efforts to eliminate the issues. No charges have been filed at this point. A Kershaw County man is missing and is in need of a medical attention. The Kershaw County Sheriff's Office says Paul Dollarhide went missing around noon on Sunday when he went to go to a store near his home. He has health issues that do require medical attention. If you happen to know where this man is, or happen to see him, please call Crime Stoppers at one crime sc A roundtable discussion was held with national public health officials to talk about ending the HIV epidemic here in South Carolina. ABC Columbia's Maria Schotkowski was at that meeting to see what plan officials have in store. 
Representatives from the Health Resources and Services Administration attend. Robert Mueller will appear before two congressional committees tomorrow. His testimony has the ability to make or break impeachment proceedings. After Mueller said in April if he were able to clear the president of obstruction charges, he would have. Here's ABC's Jonathan Carl. Victims and first responders of 9-11 have one more hurdle to clear before getting the funding they need to cover health care for decades to come. Today, the Senate passed a bill that would compensate those who were injured in the September 11th attacks and in its aftermath through the year 2090. The original fund was running out of money and was expected to expire in December of 2020. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the fund is expected to cost about $10 billion over the next decade and will cover medical costs of victims without limitations. John Stewart and surviving first responders have been pushing lawmakers to pass that extension. Parents are upset about a proposed rezoning that could force their kids into different schools starting next year. Good evening and thank you for joining us for ABC Columbia News at 11. I'm Josh Berry. Tonight, parents met with Richland 2 administrators about the rezoning of two subdivisions. ABC Columbia's Alexis Frazier was there. She joins us live now with more on this. Alexis, they're running out of chances to make their voices heard, but administrators insist there are good reasons to do this. Two men in connection to a Lexington home burglary last week have been arrested in Alabama. Christian Brown and Antonio Priester have each been charged with burglary, kidnapping, grand larceny and armed robbery after authorities say on November 19th they broke into a woman's home on the 100 block of Martell Drive, stole several items including her credit cards, then used her car to get away. Brown and Priester were arrested in Auburn, Alabama the next day. Authorities in Lancaster County say a 10-year-old boy was shot and killed by another 10-year-old boy while playing by themselves on November 15th. Deputies say the boys were playing in a Lancaster home when one fired the 9mm gun at the other, then carried him out of the house. Authorities say the parent who hid the gun under a mattress has been charged with neglect. Deputies are talking to prosecutors to determine what to do with the boy who fired that gun. Columbia police arrested an 18-year-old accused of crashing a stolen SUV into a house early this morning. Javino Bookert faces charges including possession of a stolen vehicle and a hit and run. The car was stolen from a home on Harrison Road. Well, now, when police spotted that car, they say they tried to pull him over on English Avenue, but he refused to stop. Officers lost sight of that SUV, but were flagged down by neighbors after it crashed into a home on Parkwood Drive. One person died after a struggle early Sunday morning. Investigators responded to a home on Percival Road. That was around 4.30 in the morning. RCSD says two people were involved in a struggle when a gun went off, killing one of them. No one has been charged, but that investigation continues. Now, with Thanksgiving just days away, some health officials say not being careful with how you prepare your feast could cause major problems. The Palmetto Poison Center says the turkey is the main culprit behind most of their calls leading up to Thanksgiving. Officials say leaving turkey out on the counter to thaw in room temperature encourages bacteria to multiply, leading to foodborne illnesses like salmonella. The Palmetto Poison Center recommends refrigerating the turkey at least 24 hours before you prepare it or thawing it out in cold tap water, provided you change that water every half hour. There are guidelines to recommend how long you should thaw your turkey in a refrigerator based on how much they weigh. Now, Michaels also says you should set your oven at no lower than 325 degrees and to not carve the turkey on the same cutting board as fruits and vegetables. And breaking news tonight, the Lexington County Coroner has identified the three men who were killed. 28-year-old Branton Booker and 26-year-old Sheldon Livingston died at the scene. 27-year-old Dwayne Williams died a short time later at the hospital. Tonight, a massive and what has been a deadly storm stretching from the Gulf to the Northeast has caused multiple accidents as freezing conditions slick in the roadways. In the south, before it reached us, that same storm system produced more than two dozen tornadoes, killing three people. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. You can now kick back and enjoy a cold one at a Carolina game. Today, the USC Board of Trustees unanimously approved the sale of alcoholic beverages at football, basketball, and baseball games. ABC Columbia's Tim Scott explains how the university wanted to do their homework before taking that step. There were a lot of people that didn't think we needed to wait as long as we did. And just across the street today, dozens of protesters took over the state house grounds to voice their disapproval for the president and their support for his impeachment. Protesters say it's time lawmakers listen to what their constituents have to say in a time where the country needs strong leadership. We want to let 
Senator Scott, Senator Graham, and Repre Representative Wilson know that we're watching. The pro-impeachment protest at the State House was one of many protests staged across the country. The House of Representatives will hold that historic vote on whether or not to impeach the president tomorrow. And for the first time in more than two decades, Congress has approved funding for gun violence research. 25 million out of a 1.4 trillion dollar spending bill passed to avoid a government shutdown will be allocated toward gun violence research. Half of the 25 million will go to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the other half will go to the National Institutes of Health. Now the funding comes as the nation continues to grapple with the effects of frequent mass shootings. The CDC has avoided firearms research because of its interpretation of the so-called Dickey Amendment which prohibits the CDC from using funds to advocate for or promote gun control. Former solicitor Dan Johnson has been sentenced to federal prison for using government money for personal expenses. This afternoon, a judge sentenced Johnson to one year and a day after he pleaded guilty to one count of wire fraud in February. Johnson was originally facing dozens of federal charges, but the others were dropped as part of a plea deal. The U.S. Supreme Court will not hear the Michael Slager case. Slager shot and killed Walter Scott in April of 2015. The former North Charleston police officer had petitioned the Supreme Court to hear an appeal of his prison sentence. He pleaded guilty in 2017 to the federal charge of depriving Scott of his civil rights under the color of law and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Slager had appealed the conviction in lower courts twice before. Both of those appeals were denied. The men and women killed and the survivors of the Emanuel AME shooting were honored today at Allen University. Today, the university held its Mother Emanuel Nine Day of Remembrance Commemoration Ceremony. At the event, the inaugural Emanuel Lives Award was given to Alana Simmons Grant. Simmons Grant is the granddaughter of one of the Emanuel Nine and the founder of the nonprofit Hate Won't Win. Four years later, be doing the work that not only continues in making sure that the legacy of my grandfather is one of love, but as well as the victims and the survivors and anyone really who has been affected by hate crimes or discrimination, bullying, etc. Three of the nine killed at Mother Emanuel were graduates of Allen University. Riverbank Zoo will get its full funding from Lexington County. Last night, the county council voted to amend their recommended funding of the zoo to $1.2 million. Last month, we told you the council was considering cutting that by more than half. The council will hold its second reading on that budget next week. And the zoo's Toucan Tuesdays start next week. Riverbank Zoo and Harvest Hope team up every year for the summer food drive. Starting next Tuesday, you can bring two canned goods to get two people in for the price of one. According to the zoo, since the program began in 2010, they have collected close to 40,000 pounds of food for Midland's families. Toucan Tuesdays will take place every Tuesday through August 13th.